I am in my car today. You never know where I'm going to show up. <laughs> but I still can't seem to get some space anywhere. So um, I have a lot of people asking me for questions. And I have some questions about catering that I've been getting and about, you know, doing events and things like that. And I've been really wanting to get onto a live stream and I just have not had a spare time and place that has been a good spot for me. It's um, been a really busy week. So um, I have about 15 minutes while I'm in the library at the parking lot. And so I really want to get this information out to you because now is the time. And I feel like if I wait and I wait any longer then people who really need this information are gonna miss things that they really um, could benefit from. So I'm gonna put this out there, I'm gonna be fast. And if you have your questions, come with your questions now because I don't have a whole lot of time. But um, let's get started talking about catering. That's what this live stream is gonna be about because um, catering is, it really is what our business is all about, right? Um, we cater to our clients. I mean, we are the hospitality industry. We are catering to them. And you got to get used to that. It is not about what you want. It is not about what, um, you know, you like. It is about what they want, what your clients want. And sometimes you may not agree with them. Sometimes it may not be your thing. But Here's what I'm gonna promise you, is that you will gain something from every experience. And hi, Milan. Thank you for saying hi. Hi, Marianne, hi. Who else? Hello, San Antonio, Oxy. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you for watching. Okay, I'm gonna talk fast, so if you have questions, just hop on there. I love that I can see the comments, because last time I could not see comments, so. Um, um, catering, I'm talking about catering. It's all about your clients. It's about what they want. You will learn something that will benefit you in the future, even if it's not what you like. So, you know, just make it, make it what they want. So right now we are in spring. A lot of you may be very slow right now. Um, and that is because it is a slow time. Um, it's Mar March, it's April. Um, I don't even know what day it is, but it's, I know we're in April and we're getting close to tax season and that often is a very slow time. Um, it's just not a time people are doing a lot of events. They're not, you know, doing a lot of parties, but it is like right now I'm telling you, it's one of those things when it seems like nothing is happening. Everything is happening. So now in spring is when you plant your seeds. And I promise you, I promise you if you're doing that, and I've been trying to remind you if um, you like my page or if you are on my list or in my group, I'm talking about planting seeds in spring. And that, you know, it takes some time for them to bloom, for your flowers to bloom. But you plant them now and summer is coming and i have a feeling this is going to be a big summer for chefs who have their own business um what do you guys think because i i have somebody commenting on the other post but i can't see hopefully they can see this i think people are ready to socialize i don't know about you what do you think i mean the entire country has been cooped well the entire world but you know the entire country world has been cooped up and we're ready to party. Um, I'm vaccinated. I'm ready to go out. I'm so excited for things to open up again. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. And whether you're vaccinated or not, you probably are ready for things to start getting back to normal. And a lot of people are really gonna party soon. They're going to celebrate. They're going to want to celebrate their kids graduating. They're going to want to celebrate their birthdays. They're going to want to celebrate things in their life. And 
You know, you can help them do that because restaurants are different. They're not going to allow a group of 20 people to come into a restaurant and have a party the way that they used to. It's just not going to be like that, right? So that's why I strongly felt like I had to get this information out because I really hope that you're planting the seeds now. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what those seeds are. I have already given a ton of suggestions, um, but I'm talking about creating offers, getting the word out about your business, um, connecting with people, thinking about how you can help the people of your community with an offer and, you know, spreading those seeds and then they come and I guarantee you they will come back and you will get business. Yes, Milan, everything we do is catering. It's we're in the hospitality industry. And one thing my clients always say about me, there's a few things they say that make me know why they like working with me. And they usually say, you're so easy to work with. You make things so easy. Um, you know, and that's what they want. They don't want you to make it complicated. Okay. They want you to help them. Um, now they may be complicated in their own way, which that's their thing, but you don't want to add to that complication. You are there as a personal chef to make it easy. You are not a corporation. You're not a big catering company. You So where chefs fit in in catering, this is what I want to talk about. So they fit in in a different space than catering companies. You are not going to do a plated event for 500 people. You're just not. I mean, if you have the the means to do that, you probably, um, you know, are not thinking about starting your own chef business. You're you're in a big company. So chefs provide things that caterers really would never do. I could do a dinner for two and charge $500 for it. And it may be very simple and easy for me. A caterer would never touch that. And that's still catering. I don't want it to be simplified for me and them. I don't know what that means. I Can you clarify? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. You don't want it to be simplified? The, when I'm talking about it simplified, I mean the process of the event. They, uh, like, I remember a personal chef a long time ago used to call her business the kitchen fairy. And it's similar to that even with catering. It's like they don't want to think about the hard stuff. They want to know what you're going to do, how much it's going to cost, and what do they need to do to make that happen. I don't want it to be complicated for me and them. That is, yeah. And it will get less complicated over time. In the beginning, you know, you're going to be setting up your systems. You're going to be figuring out what works for you and changing things a lot. So um, that's, I mean, and that's why I'm here to help because I don't want you to have to backtrack. So, um, but it's normal to want to change things, but yeah, don't make it complicated for them. Make it easy. And sometimes that can mean taking a little bit of a risk too in business. Like you can take a risk by, for example, you have a little bit of a high maintenance client right now. And, um, you may be, you know, like taking a little bit of a risk by taking him on and you may kind of decide, okay, this is more work than I anticipated. And maybe I don't, uh, I didn't charge enough. Um, you can learn from that and move on from that. And doesn't mean that you have to stay in that same relationship with him. Um, but we learn from those things. So it still can be helpful. But what I wanted to talk about is catering. I think it's going to be a big summer for chefs. Think about this. Think about how you can help people socialize. How can you help them have a good time? How can you help them get together? People want to get together. It's been over a year and, you know, they're ready to entertain. People have remodeled their house. They've fixed things up. They've had a garden. I mean, how can you celebrate that and help them celebrate that how can you create an offer or how can you showcase your skills and really show them how you can help them so 
what questions do you have? I got to get going. Um, I really want to talk about the income you can make from catering. So I will touch into that before I, I um, get off. But if you have questions, let me know. Uh, the income from catering is very, very good. You can, you know, you can double or even triple your income from catering. And, you know, it's good to know the pros and cons because it's not, you know, that sounds really great, but it's definitely a lot of work and it's something you do build experience with as time goes. I have done, I've, I've definitely done thousands of events in my chef career. So it's catering is my specialty. Um, that's one of my strengths. So, um, for me to do an event, I, I had to learn. I did so many events that I undercharged. I did so many events that I allowed clients to take advantage of me and my, my desire to really show them a great meal or show them, you know, a great event. They take they took advantage of that and got things that maybe um, I would never do that now. So, you know, that's something that you learn over time, but you want to make sure that when you are catering, that you, you know ahead of time, how much time is this going to take you and how much do you want to make for your hours? And you need to figure that out before you ever quote anybody a price because Sometimes something sounds like a lot of money and then when you actually factor in everything else that you're doing, it's not a lot of money at all and then you don't want to end up running around town and doing all this work and you're not making any money off of it. That's going to make you really angry. So, you know, think about that ahead of time. Think about don't ever quote anybody a price or agree to do something until you have calculated your hours and calculated your time and calculated your food and if you're going to need help and all that. So, um, but hopefully this gave you guys some inspiration of what to do. It is going to be a big summer of dinner parties. I'm still new with this. I don't know if I'm undercharging sometimes. That's where I am sometimes, that's where I'm at, probably. Sometimes it sounds like a lot of money. It totally does. I know. I I can relate because I've been there so many times and um, ultimately you're never, you're probably not going to get it correct 100%. I'm not going to say that there's any way because things happen and, you know, Sometimes you don't even realize things add up and you don't factor in other other expenses or a store is out of something and you may have to go somewhere else and it costs you more money or more gas. Um, so, you know, that is difficult, but I would say always, always, always pad your expense. So one thing I did, I'll tell you a little secret that I did for my dinner parties. So I was always undercharging. Thank you. I'm so glad you think it's helpful. I appreciate that. Um one thing I always did for my dinner parties, and once I did this, I was never upset again at, at after the event at the night. So um, what I did was I would always charge a per person charge for my dinner parties. Like, for example, let's say my dinner party was $100 a person, and I had a dinner party of eight. Um, that's $800. Okay, so that's that's not bad. You think dinner for eight people, $800, it's probably not going to take me, um, you know, more than probably four to six hours worth of work. But what would happen, because this would, I would include food in my cost. Because if you would go to a restaurant, $100 per person would get you a nice dinner. And that's really what I wanted it comparable to. Then I realized this, the food cost was coming. It was, it was eating away all my profit. And so what I did was instead of adding food, because then it makes it complicated for my client. And I'm not saying I, I charge plus food a lot, but for my retainer clients who I have a credit card on file, I don't have to bother them. I just, 
can charge them the specific price of the food. But if this is an event, I don't want a client to have a big question mark of what they're gonna pay. So what I did was I would charge the per person, so that stayed the way it was, and then I would charge an additional labor fee on top of that. Um, so it might be $200 for a flat, flat labor fee, for example. It might be less, it might be more. It, it really would depend on the event. Um, and it would depend on who the labor was. If the labor was me, it was going to be a little bit higher. It might be $200 flat fee. Okay, so they would pay the eight hundred dollars for the per for the hundred dollars per person, and then they would pay a two hundred dollar flat fee for the labor, and that covered their entire labor. So I would say, you know, that covers the entire night. Now, eight people, I would need a helper usually to do dishes. So I would say, you know, it's two hundred dollars for my labor, and then it's a hundred and fifty uh, another hundred and fifty dollars to have someone come and help me wash dishes and. Um, you know, so that covered all of my expenses based on, you know, really how much work I was putting out. And so I never had to get a tip. I never felt like at the end of the night, oh my gosh, I wonder if I'm going to tip because I felt like I was paid fairly. I felt like I was able to give them a really nice event. And then I was able to pay my staff fairly. And then they knew what to expect. There were no question marks. They knew, okay, it's going to be, you know, $1,050 for Jessica to come cook this amazing meal. She's going to clean it up. The kitchen's going to be spotless. Me and my friends can, you know, or our family can not worry about. We can enjoy ourselves. And that's what they want to know. That's all they want to know. They do not want to know... Um, you know, all of these other things about your, your business or, you know, they just want to know how much is it going to be and what are you going to do and what do they have to do? So you say, I know a lot of chefs who don't charge what I charge. That's why I think it's a lot. Well, you live in a, an area where you can charge a little bit more. So uh, you're in an urban area. People in urban areas are going to be able to charge more. And there's that, that's good. You don't want to always be the lowest, um, and if you're the highest, if you're charging a premium, there's a reason for that. So, um, you know, if you feel like you need to come down, I mean, you don't want to be so far where you're pricing yourself out, but you're still getting clients. So I don't think you're that out of your realm. It seem, seems like you're pricing yourself good. Um, you just may need to tweak a little thing in your service. You may need to tweak how much time you spend on each of your clients, Milan. You give your clients quite a high level of service, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't because that's amazing, but maybe they need to work up to that. So maybe you start them in, feel them out, give them a good service, and then once you get to know them more and you get to know what they like, then you know boost it up a level. Just a thought, I don't know. I know what you're saying. I know, you wanna give that high level. I'm just saying maybe, I'm not saying don't give the high level, maybe just your time, you're spending a lot of time on each client, which is why it feels like you're not getting enough. And they are paying you well. So how can you make it work? Because you don't want to lose those people. I mean, that's a good client. Wait, and I don't want you to lose a client over like $50. You know what I'm saying? To get that good retainer client who is, um, you know, who's giving you that good base income. Anyway, I'll talk to you about it later. So talked a lot and um, come back if you have questions. I'm going to log off, but I, I really enjoy talking about this, even though not many of you had questions, but I know a lot of you come to me after. Let's see. I think it's me not good with my time. It's a lot at first. It's a lot. When I, and I talk about this, um, I think I talk about it in my webinar or my course. I can't remember. But when I first started, I mean, I came from doing events for literally like 800 people on a regular basis. I was a sous chef for a very high-end caterer when I started my personal chef business. And we did big, big, big events. I thought cooking for a family or a single person was going to be a breeze. I thought it would be no problem. Or doing an event for six people. I think that was my first event, a, a lunch for six women, a four course lunch. And I thought it was going to be no problem uh, cooking for four people. I do parties for hundreds of people. 
but it's different. It's different when it's your own business. It's different when you have to do everything. I mean, you're doing the dishes, you're doing the uh, communication, you're doing the shopping, you're doing the planning, cooking. I mean, everything. It's different. You have to learn how to manage your time. Um, we can talk later and find out where you're spending all your time. Are you spending your time cooking or are you spending your time on the computer planning? Are you spending your time going back and forth with your clients? When you figure out where that is, let me know and, and we can tighten that up. Okay, I got to run. Um, have a great weekend. And